What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Bony Operator here. Today we're going to go over a few of the Centurion Arms handguard options, specifically the old school CMR cutout series. Now even though these are technically discontinued, if you email Centurion Arms then you might be able to score yourself one if they still have any back in the warehouse. Other than that, if you do manage to acquire one or you already have one, I just want to go ahead and cover some of the installation procedures that I had gone through and to give you some considerations when you're going through the installation process for yourself. For the purposes of this video, we're going to mainly focus on the carbine cut version that's here as well as the mid-length cut that's shown here. As far as these two, these are actually the extended versions of these two, one in carbine and one in mid-length, but we'll go ahead and talk about that a little bit later. For now, we're just going to focus mainly on the non-extended versions. And if you'll notice, I have a couple other items that are lying around. These are essentially background decorations, but I do want to kind of showcase that Centurion Arms does make base plates for the Glock 17, as well as the Glock 19, as well as PMAGs. These will fit the 10 round, 20 round, and the 30 rounds. And I guess if you really wanted to, the 40 round PMAX. I have these set up in a 20 round right now, specifically to use in most of my configurations that have magnified optics, mainly because when I go prone or when I go bench shooting, then I don't necessarily want a longer magazine to stick out the bottom and potentially hinder my ability to, I guess, be more stable and flat while shooting in those positions. And segueing from there, we're also gonna go ahead and talk about LAS Concealment, which I am a discount code holder for them. So if you need holsters, visit LAS Concealment's website and use my discount code BUNNY, which is also located down in the video description below, and save yourself a little bit of money. This one is the Ronin 3.0 uh, light bearing model that I use when I carry my Glock 17 Gen 3 that's been modified. And you'll see I also have a Centurion Arms slide here that's specifically cut for the Acro. And fits right in, allows for the agency comp to go through, and this is how I carry it, less, of course, the extended magazine here, I'll carry a flush magazine, obviously. So we'll set this aside for now. Shout out to Akshay at Revival Defense, you my homie dog. I actually have a discount code for them as well, so check the video description out to use that. It's also Bunny, and that saves you a little bit of money on most of the products. All right, and moving right along, we're gonna go ahead and set this to the side for now. All of these handguards, they come with Centurion Arms proprietary barrel nut. This is an aluminum barrel nut, and you'll see that it's pretty much a castle nut configuration, as opposed to something like the GI barrel nut, which has a bunch of teeth going around. More on this later, that's specifically used on their two-piece handguard design which you can see here. And this is a current production model and available to you should you want this option. Now they also have this in, this is the carbine version. They also have this in the mid-length version should you need that, as well as an extended version for the carbine cut. Say for example, you had a 14.5 or a 16 inch carbine with an FSB and you wanted that extension, then you can go in and order that. And it's basically the modernized versions of these. Now that's to note, that these CMRs are all one piece design, so it's a little bit more involved in the installation process. Hence why the creation of this video to sort of walk you through the process. So in every package, it comes with, of course, the handguard, the barrel nut, barrel nut tool, you can see it's castle nut pattern. The two main screws that go into the handguard on this side as well as a fastener for the opposite side to go in the center. And in between those goes the little spacer washer thingy that helps you sort of maintain tension on the aluminum portion of the handguard here. Well, the whole handguard's aluminum, but it just gives you a little bit of tension there. And of course, an anti-rotation tabs are here, as well as this anti-rotation tab that also indexes to the gas tube. So it's another nice little spiff. Now note that the more modern Centurion Arms one-piece handguards are actually two screw designs versus three, and they have a slightly different installation process. Some of them may or may not come with these anti-rotation uh, indexers 
for the gas tube. I believe it's just an anti-rotation tab. And some of the newer uppers for them actually come with an anti-rotation tab that's cut out into the upper. And I believe that the newer, newer production handguards are going to have a little tab that sticks out. Now, the main differences between the carbon cut and the mid-length cut, other than the obvious distance or size difference, is that the mid-length cut, you'll see that the cooling holes or the cooling slots on the bottom actually extend all the way towards the end of the handguard, while the carbon cut does not. So what I did was I ended up just drilling little holes through both sides of the handguards in order to access the taper pins. Now, there is a way to install it without needing to do that. And I spoke with another member of the Centurion Arms community, uh, another patron, not somebody who worked for Centurion Arms. And he ended up creating a block that actually inserts with the barrel and uh, provides support to the barrel when you're hammering the taper pins in. But that's probably beyond most people's means. So I think that drilling the hole seems to be one of the better options and easier options for you to do that. And I spoke with Corey at Centurion Arms and she said that that's generally one of the examples that uh, that can be done to install the handguards in addition to the other method that I referred to. The mid-length cut, these cooling slots actually allow you to install the taper pins on your FSB. And I'll show you a photo of that to see what that looks like. And then you'll notice that the two extended handguards here actually have the cooling slots in the bottom for you to access the taper pins. Now granted, you still have to shift the handguards a little bit forward and back, basically manipulate it until you can have full clearance of the taper pins, depending on exactly how your setup is set up. Now, I want you all to understand that because these are one piece hand guards, everything essentially forward of the upper receiver has to be essentially installed at the same time. Once your barrel goes on and your barrel nut is installed and torqued to proper settings, then your gas block or your FSB in this case gas tube, ideally, your handguard and your taper pins have to be installed at the same time. And this is of course, before your muzzle device. So for you folks that are playing in a pin and weld out there, make sure you get this all done correctly and you like it the way you like it before you decide to pin and weld your muzzle device. Before we get to the next part, understand that I'm specifically referring to what is quote unquote considered as a traditional FSB using taper pins. And I generally would prefer not to use a clamp on type device, especially for an FSB. And you'll probably also notice that my nomenclature is flip flopping back and forth when I'm referring to the sling swivel, sling studs, but just understand that I'm referring to the actual sling mounting point. All right, now that that's all clarified, let's go ahead and continue on with the rest of the video. Another thing to note is that you need to prep your FSB before installing these and it's slightly different depending on which version you have. For all of these models, ideally you need to cut off the sling swivel on the FSB. Not just remove the swivel itself, but the actual mounting location for the sling swivel. Now for all the versions that I'm going to note here, the carbine, the carbine extended, and the mid-length extended, you need to also cut off your bayonet lug there might not be enough clearance for you to slide everything through, just considering how narrow the ID is on these handguards. As far as the mid-length goes, the mid-length, you can actually keep your bayonet lug on there and you only need to remove the sling swivel just because there is uh, enough of a cutout and distance here for the bayonet lug to hang out. And I'll roll in a photo of that for you to see the differences between the carbine and the mid-length. As far as the new modern handguard design goes, you don't need to do any of that. There are relief cuts on the inside of the two-piece handguards that allow for space for the sling swivel portion of your FSB. Granted, you need to remove the swivel itself, but as far as the mount goes, it's fine. You can leave it as is. Uh, when I had this on my setups, I opted to cut it off personally just because I wanted a little bit more clearance underneath the handguard in order to install M-Lock accessories, but that's your call if you want to do that. The bayonet lug did not need to get removed. It was able to, to stay on as is. And of course, I'll roll in photos of that, of both the carbine and the mid link for you to see what that looks like. The beauty of the newer systems being two-piece designs is that they are direct drop in to anybody with a, an existing setup that uses an FSB and has the GI barrel nut. Granted, 
majority of the setups out there, specifically let's say factory guns, will have the plastic hand guards with the delta ring and the hand guard retaining cap. So all that needs to get cut off in order for you to be able to use the new two piece designs. Now, if you're going to be going towards the CMR designs, then, well, you'll need to basically take everything off anyways. But yeah, essentially for the newer modern designs, you just need to cut off your delta ring as well as your hangout retaining cap before you end up installing the two-piece design. So I actually think this is an excellent upgrade for anybody who needs to upgrade an antiquated GI design. And now the question goes, why would I do all this just to install a discontinued handguard? Well, I really like the Centurion Arms CMR series of handguards. They're slim and they fit really well in my hands. I use them on uh, quite a bit of my setups and have come to even customize their handguards specifically for setups that don't necessarily take the handguard naturally. One example is my Smith & Wesson MP1522 that does not take traditional AR-15 handguards, but I was able to use an adapter from Tactical 22 as well as made a few modifications to the 1522 itself to accept the 15-inch M-Lock handguard from Centurion Arms. Now the M-Lock version is just the M-Lock version of the CMR series. The CMR, is, if you don't know, is a proprietary system with its own mounting points. I like them because they are very strong design and frankly, aesthetically, they're really cool. Now, the CMR series, if you do get this, I do recommend you order a pack of their CMR accessory packets, which comes with a hand stop, rail panels, uh, 1913 positions, a offset light mount, as well as anything else you might need, like a bipod stud or such. Centurion Arms also has their CMR panels adapted for M-Lock. So if you like their CMR panels and you want to apply it to an M-Lock handguard, go to their website and order that version. That's pretty much it, folks. It was just a quick overview of considerations when installing these particular types of handguards and the alternative options for you, such as the newer two-piece design or the newer M-Lock design. So the options are available to you. I want to thank Centurion Arms again for all the gracious hospitality. They are a great group of people and super fun to talk to you. And I really hope that y'all go to the website to see if there are any products that might suit your needs. Don't forget to check the video description for discount codes for my friends in the industry. And of course, if you have any questions on something that I didn't cover or something that needs clarifying, feel free to drop them in the comments below, DM me directly, and I'll try to answer it to the best of my ability. That's all I got for you today. Thank you for watching. Bunny Operator, signing out.